dramatic stuff, eh? Virtually the last kick of the game. Sheffield United win it to extend their lead at the top of the championship table. Derek Geary, wow. What can you say? It was a fantastic finish to the game. I think it got a bit um, muddled in the second half. They got a couple of chances, but massive credit as an defend, ex-defender. Uh, Chris Basham's tackle just before. Obviously, the ball's played up the field. And obviously, Rion Bruce, who did really well when he came on. Great bit of play, getting away from Norton. It's a great ball and it's a great finish. Same end as your goal, I think, as well, wasn't it? Yeah, I think that one a bit Something more... Something about that goal. A bit more dramatic, though, that. <laughs> uh, like Del says, you know, I think everybody... Arts, arts in mouth at one end, you know, great tackle from Bash, well-timed. And then, um, you know, K K Kyle knows he's in trouble. You know, he, he's let the ball bounce. Rian is then, you know, he, he senses I've got a chance and, and he's just quicker and stronger, unfortunately. Um, but the bit I liked was, you know, the unselfishness just to slide that ball in and, and let Reader go on through, you know, because... Rihanna had wanted to score, but he knows, you know, that's, that's brilliant play for him. We'll look at the goal in, in greater detail in a few minutes, but it was on a knife edge really throughout, wasn't it? There wasn't much between the two teams. When you look at the, the stats, uh, 11 attempts on goal for Swansea, 12 for Sheffield United, three on target for the Blades, two for Swansea. Corner kick count was similar, possession mm. stats were very similar as well. Not, not a great deal between them, was there overall? No. No, not at all. And I think, um, I think both teams had, a, had settled for nil-nil, as it's heading towards the end. Um, but, you know, in football, there's, there's always one last chance and could have been theirs, you know, brilliant tackle. And then it's, it, it's our chance at the other end and we've took it and, you know, the, the, we, we, we spoke about the fans. You know, they've, they've travelled down there this afternoon, four hours down, looks as though it's poured it down with rain all the way through the game. You know, they've left glorious sunshine in Sheffield, rain in Wales, and they're all on the way back up the motorway with, uh, with three points. Let's look back then at some of the uh, talking points of that second half. As we mentioned, both sides had chances uh, to take all three points. Sorinola, who was, you know, a threat most of the night down that right-hand side. Him and Norrington Davis were going at it, hammer and tongs, and there the two players are again in close proximity, and uh, Norrington Davis just managing, I think, to shut that angle down. Yeah, there. like um, Morg's mentioned quite a lot in commentary, it was a great battle down that, um, obviously, our left-hand side with him and um, Reese and Reese, I, I felt, came out on top, but it was a great tackle at the back stick there. I think uh, a bit of a snatch shot across goal, but I think Reese has defended that really well. Joel Peru might have a sleepless night tonight. Yeah, I think um, I expected better from him. You know, he's, he's, he's done great. He did that first half as well. You know, he, when a striker's in that position, all you can do as a defender, like uh, Anel's done there, he's, he's, he's got to try and get a block on it. You know, and he, he sucks you in, he brings it back inside, and he's done the first one first half on his left foot, and then on his right foot, and, you know, luckily for us, he's, uh, he's not had his shooting boots on. Sander Berger. Yeah. Another big chance. Had a big chance in the first half and another one in the second here. Yeah, again, great play down the uh, left-hand side for Reese. It's a great ball in the box. And to be honest with you... Has he taken that too early or too late? <laughs> Probably too late. If he can get there early, I think it's that connection. It's a goal, really. You've seen him volume in before. I've seen them, the keeper being lobbed from that position before, but <laughs> obviously... But not this time. No. I think, he, I think he's got to get to it earlier. You know, he's, he's, he's got to read the cross. And I think if he gets on it, because the, the, the pitch, it, it's, it's zippy. You know, there's a, lot, there's a lot of wet on it. It's, and it's, you know, it's, it's, the, it's come off his shin, hasn't it, in the end? Uh, you know, he's, he's leaning back. If, we, if we're talking technique, you know, he's, he's potentially probably got it all wrong. You know, he's dangling a leg, he's leaning back. Hence why he pulls his shirt mm. over his head. He, he, he knows. You know, he knows what a big chance that is. Toed and froed a little bit, but we were all panicking at this. Um, <laughs> Wes Fonderingham, his clearance, Cannon's back off his own man, and Ollie Cooper here, I thought he was going to score, and then decides to square it, and again, Peru shut down, uh, and the chance goes away. But what a big moment that was. Yeah, um, to be honest, they should have scored there, for being honest. I think we rolled our luck a bit. I think, I'm not sure what Cooper's doing past, and I think he's just got to put his foot through it and score, but, and then it's a great tackle at the end, so... Yeah, we got away with that one. 
great reaction from Anel. So so unlike Wes to do that, to, you know, to miss kick it. But if you actually look at Ollie Cooper, he, he actually pulls the ball back. Mm. You know, he's actually he's he's going backwards. You're thinking the minute it turns to you, it lands to you there. Sorry, touch bang. You know, I know we spoke about Rian being unselfish and 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 sliding reader in, but I think that's a a total different situation to this. You know, that one is literally everybody's panicked, everybody's running back, just just spin and smash it. Mm. Great recovery from Anel. Uh, Rian Brewster on from the bench. Uh, looked like a decent chance, but I think it was Ryan Manning, wasn't it, who got really tight to him here, maybe just puts him off. Yeah, it was quite ironic, really. I think Ali McBorney was crying out for that sort of quality of ball in all night onto his head, by the one in the first half from George Baldock. So, yeah, I, I probably think he probably should have scored down personally myself. Well, we've been building up to it. Stoppage time winner from another substitute. Reda Kadra, his first for the club. Starts at the other end of the pitch. I think Swansea felt aggrieved by that challenge there, but it was won fairly and squarely. And then the breakaway. It's, it's a great camera angle that we're actually watching it from, you know, because you see, you see Bash's tackle, you see a brilliant ball played down the line. And the, the, minute, the minute Kyle, an experienced defender, played at the top level, he knows he's in trouble. The minute that ball lands and it's not come through to him, it, the, the alarm's ringing in his head. He knows he's got trouble because he knows Rian's quick, he knows he's strong and he, he, you know, Kyle just couldn't deal with it. What a moment for Reda Kadra because he's had to be patient. Uh, I think when he first got signed, we thought he might be an automatic starter. That hasn't been the case, but that will do his confidence the world of good. Yeah, I think um, seeing him in the trainer pitch and all, he's a live wire, he's, yeah. he's full of enthusiasm and uh, I can tell because of the depth of the squad that we've got, you'll get certain players will be frustrated at the time of not getting game time. But I think moving forward, I think that'll do us confidence the world of good. And the depth we've got, we've got them two players coming on the pitch and to make that impact in the game, is, it's great. And it's great. It's a great headache for Eki to have, really, having them type of players coming off the bench. And credit Rian here as well. You know, he was strong in the first instance and he had the awareness to pick him out as well. Yeah, it's, it's brilliant centre-forward play. And I, I like that about all our centre-forwards. They, they don't give defenders a minute, you know. And as a, you've, you've got to be totally on it all the time when you're playing against us. Um, they, they, they don't. You know, the two, the two that start the game, they're after you, they're upsetting you. And then the two that have come on have, have done the exact same thing. And, you know, we're talking about Rita Kadra. You know, he's, he's come from Brighton, probably expected to play, but... It's come to a team that's flying at the top of the league and, you know, you've got to be patient. You've got mm. to wait for your opportunity. Well, all those Blades fans making the long trip tonight won't get back until the wee small hours, but they'll be smiling all the way back home and Sheffield United will go bouncing into the weekend where they'll take on Preston North End. And, of course, we'll be on air from 2 o'clock building up to that 3 o'clock game, the Blades at Deepdale. Well, Sheffield United's record in Swansea wasn't great, was it? But Reda Kadra put the ball into net at the Swansea.com. See ya. <laughs>